the Doppler effect can often be tested with a simultaneous equation where the question would read something like this, where we are told that a train is approaching a stationary observer at a set speed V, and the observer observes a frequency of 500 hertz. The train then continues and passes that observer, and then as it's moving away at that same speed V, the observer then observes a frequency of 440 hertz. Now this question is unique because the velocity of the train has remained unchanged, and we have two observed frequencies, but we do not have the source frequency. So we have two unknowns, but because there are two separate instances here, we can see this as two equations with two unknowns. So we apply the Doppler effect twice, the first time for the train approaching, where we say when the train is approaching, the observer observes a frequency of 500 hertz as given. We are told that the observer is stationary and therefore there is no speed there and we are always given the speed of sound in air, in this case that is 340 meters per second. And now we know that since the train is moving towards the observer, those waves are going to be compressing or condensing and so that this should be a minus sign here and that is minus the speed of the source, which is also an unknown along with the frequency of that source. We can then rewrite this in terms of the frequency of the source, and that then comes out as 500 times 340 minus Vs over 340. And that's as far as we can go. We have two unknowns there. We can then do the same thing for the second instance, that being the train moving away from this observer, we now know that the observed frequency is 440 hertz. Once again, the observer is stationary, speed of sound in air remains the same. And now because the train is moving away, we know that that means that those waves are going to spread out to expand as they move away. And therefore we have a plus the speed of that source and then again the frequency of the source being unknown. This can then also be rewritten as frequency of the source is equal to 440 multiplied by 340 plus the velocity of that source over 340. And we now have two equations and two unknowns. And what we can now safely say is we can say, but this train's frequency has not changed. Therefore, since the frequency of both of these sources is the same, we can then say that these two must be equal to each other, that is 500 times 340 minus Vs over 340 must be equal to this calculation over here, 440 times 340 plus Vs over 340. This can then be solved because we now have one equation with only one unknown because Vs is a constant and that then allows us through algebra to determine that the answer the speed of this train is 21.70 meters per second once we have this answer we can then substitute it into either one of these two equations to find the correct frequency for that source and we find that the correct frequency for that source is 440 multiplied by 340 plus this calculated frequency, calculated speed of 21.7, and that is divided by 340, and we find that that value is then 468.08 hertz. The emitted frequency in this, we can check for ourselves, makes sense because it is exactly, or it is not exactly, it is between the frequency that is heard when the train is approaching and the frequency heard when the train is moving away. Another common question would be something along the lines of what frequency is heard by the train driver or heard by the observer as the train passes. And in both of those scenarios, the answer is the same. The frequency that is heard is exactly the frequency that is emitted because at that point there is no relative motion between the source and the observer.